Howdy y'all, welcome on back to the channel. I am back in the great state of Texas. Just spent three weeks of my life up in Colorado, man. Amazing. I spent like three days just not even uh, filming anything. I just enjoyed the great outdoors. I gotta tell y'all, I was out in the woods, no service whatsoever away from all the news, the social media, the mask and all that stuff. It was so therapeutic. It was awesome. I suggest at least take yourself a weekend here this fall when things start cooling down. Get out there in the outdoors, shut that phone off for a couple of days and just enjoy some time with the family and the friends. It is great for your soul. Great for your whole entire body system probably. And since I was gone for so long, y'all, there's so much to catch you up on. And yes, today we are going to be unboxing the Guggen Squad official rods that we designed with Ketchco, the gold series, the green series. I'm told that there's a set waiting for me at the HQ right now, and we're gonna be heading up there in just a second. I've essentially had these rods in my hands for about five or six months. The whole process has been about nine months or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer from start to finish here. Many prototypes, I think we went through eight. So I essentially know all what, what the models are and everything. I just don't have the final cosmetic, the ones that you are going to receive, I have not even received yet, so we're about to. And speaking of Guggen Squad, I'm gonna hit y'all with a big old fall merch plug right now because this is some of the nastiest, juiciest uh, fall Guggen Squad merch I've ever seen. GuggenSquad.com get you some. I wish I had this stuff while I was on my trip to Colorado. It's like Christmas when I got home. There's so much awesome stuff here. We got the new Hunter Die slogan coming out in that Hunter Orange, you know it. We got that classic foam look. This is typically what I wear, just your standard uh, camo with that Ray's emblem, Hunter Die. Look at this stuff, y'all. Classic camo, Hunter Die. Uh, we got some elk antlers. We got a whole bunch of, oh, look, look at this color scheme. Let me just get in here for a second. This is the coolest sweatshirt we've ever produced, in my opinion. Look at that old school airhead with the forest in there, with the little cream color with camo and the orange accents to match your fluorescent orange hat. A little too bright, bring it back down. Be safe in the woods and look cool. GuggenSquad.com, tons of other stuff on there as well. And just go ahead and keep that description box there handy. It's something I always have in my toggle box, ready to go in the fall for those schoolers popping up. Get those random, they get focused on Shad. They get off of the cover sometimes and they just focus on chat. They almost come pelagic at times. So you gotta have yourself a top water, you know, a, a good walking bait. Popper style sometimes, you know, the frog, if it gets a little froggy, gotta have some blades tied on and things like that. But a lipless crank and the clutch, we've only had one size. Until now, we have launched a smaller size clutch. It is a 3 8 rifling through here, rifling through, rifling through. There we go. This is what you need. Link down below, shopcarls.com. You can save 30% if you're a Cars Club member, and um, you gotta have some of these, okay? Because they get focused on those little shads. They just little nibbles, little bite sizes, and especially in the fall, that's where I go to. Springtime, summertime, a little bigger. Go big. Fall, winter, small, sometimes is the way to go. We gotta do a quick chicken check before we head up there and unbox these gorgeously beautiful rods. Hey, y'all, I didn't mean for you to, to go on out of here, okay? Girls are doing pretty good, except for one. Little Penny, Little Penny's got an issue. She's got a neck ruffle, little, weird little neck ruffle going on. She's got a hobbly foot. She's got something going on with her foot, like an infection, and she's got a squeak. A nose squeak, and that's indicative of some sort of upper respiratory infection. This is what it sounds like when a chicken tries to blow her nose. There, hear that? A little peep, a little high peep. There it is. We did have a neighbor come collect uh, eggs for us while we were gone because the egg thing is just out of control now because we get like six to eight eggs a day. I was gone like 20 days. Let's just say seven eggs a day. Seven times 20, what was that? 140 eggs? We're just passing them around the neighborhood. We got a huge assortment in the refrigerator. We got them out on the counter. Eggs are everywhere. It's a beautiful thing. We got on-demand protein out here and our chickens are happy and healthy, except for one. Let's see what we got in the old box today. 
One, two, three, four, five. We got an Easter Egger, we got a Bard Rock, we got a Red. Okay, Silver Grey Jorking, and it looks like we have a Wine Dot. What's the difference in eggs of all those, you might ask? Really nothing. The red chickens lay jumbos, the rest of them lay large, but overall, they taste the same. They just have different colors. Kind of cool, you know, taste the rainbow. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, and I have not seen my silver bullet in a pretty long time, y'all. I gotta get back to her. Make sure she's still singing all good. Make sure that murk is still, you know, roasty toasty and ready to go. My baby, the silver bullet. She's in one piece. In fact, she looks pretty good. You ever been in the woods so long you kind of forget the last fishing trip you did? That's a good indicator. Grass fishing. And here it is! The beauty. Oh, yes. I'm just, I'm excited seeing these now. I still gotta set them up on, on reels and everything like that. I'm gonna take the boat, I'm gonna take the silver bullet home today. Take her home to the tree house and I think I might just, I might just go ahead and take it out. Just get these rods wet. I feel like they need to just get a little wet today. But first, let me just briefly go over the rods and if you want a deep dive, you can get it at shopgirls.com. Done some videos over there talking about the rods specifically, we've teamed up with Catchco to make these rods. It, it's simple. You have five rods in each series. We've got green and gold. You can collect them all. If you can collect all 10, the same concept applies as it's just, it's the basics. It's what you need to go out and do 90% of bass fishing tasks. It's just with the gold series, you're gonna see some differences in the graphite um, performing mostly faster, uh, which is indicative of uh, like thinner, better graphites. There's some things with the green rods that I really like that uh, it's that's just with the graphite a little bit slower. It makes it a little better for some things, but overall, I'm fishing gold, baby, because lighter. I love the feel of uh, cork. I love them all. They're like children. We're gonna take these home, unpackage them, get some reels on them. Get to twerking with the rods. What bam! Rigged and ready to go. Oh my goodness, ladies and gents. It is looking like sexual chocolate up in here. First thing I did, unwrapped them, shook them without any reels on it, checked the balance and everything. And we're looking pretty good. Sorry the AC's on. So, you know, coming back to 90 degrees here in Texas not 60 up in the mountains. And just to compare, these are the rods. This was like the, the final version, the final blank version that I have been using. It doesn't have the, um, the Ford grip for the lockdown, a little extra something. You know, some people like that, some people don't. Uh, I can go either way, but this is what I'm talking about. I like the Gold Series much better with it because it's, uh, it's that high grade cork. It's really, I just really like cork. I love the feel, it, um, it's the lightest thing you can get. Plus it lasts a long time. I suppose EVA foam can too, but I don't know, it's just a little spongier. I'm a big fan of the old school cork, I'm an old man. And this is the beauty right here. You see all these gold series lined up and you can see right there on the, the base of the rod what you're fishing. Reaction, twitch, it's all emojied. This is the new age people, emojis, muscle, go to. You know, this is a green, this is a green series muscle right here. And you know, for all you old school guys and gals out there, we still have the actual length and the powers, the actions and everything like that, but it's all broken down so that you can uh, you can see exactly what this rod is best for. But if I had to break down go to and a specific thing that you know I would say small Texas rigs, maybe weightless soft plastics, um, your spinner baits, medium sized crankbaits, something with a, a little heft on it. It's your meat and potatoes rod. I think me personally, I'm a gold guy, and I like just lightness. You fish a lot of days. 
throughout the year you come to appreciate um, a well balanced it's really more balance is more important than weight quite honestly these are just good overall rods y'all and they're priced awesome a hundred and forty dollar rod that feels like this no brainer i think uh i think a lot of people are going to step up to the gold because of that if you go with green you're not going to be disappointed either it is just a fantastic rod it's a little more edgy it's got that little more aggressive look to it um one thing I got to say about both of these, and I can talk all day about these, y'all. So if you have questions, leave a comment down below. Real seats, handles, they, they feel amazing. I think anybody that picks this up is going to be comfortable with it. You know, I'm a big knife lover. Some knives, some people love the way they feel. They have like finger grooves and, and jimpings and things like that. And some people love that. And then some people love like just a straight standard like very round maybe a coke bottle design just depends on the person they took a big sampling bunch of different hands bunch of different people um of course everybody in Guggen squad who said you know how, how do you feel about this and you know i choke up a lot so i can choke up on these be just fine some people sit sit back you're fine either way i could just if you're two fingers on split one finger no finger you're gonna find that comfortable either way. One thing I did not have on the samples, and there was a lot of there was a lot of back and forth about was the hook keeper. I don't even like hook keepers unless I'm fishing a Texas rig or weightless soft plastics, and I, and I don't want to take it out of the bait. Uh, but we decided to put this under. That way, you're flipping pitching, um, even just casting. Sometimes you're not gonna get that tucked in there or not it's not going to slip in there it's actually a closed design so the line can't go in um, but if you do have a texas rig soft plastic this is an example of what i'm going to use it for you got your junior trench hog here perfectly placed inside of the plastic you don't want to mess it up i actually didn't i just rigged this with one hand in two seconds but if you did rig this perfectly and you didn't want to take the hook out and you know have to re-rig it i would advise two hands pull that in there and then it's sitting inside and then you can push it back out I like that design but 90% of the time y'all I'm just gonna take that bait I'm gonna put it right there especially my jigs all my hard baits stick it right on that little uh, loop on the reel that's what it's there for you know might get scratched up beat up but it's part of the beauty maybe just one other thing I'm missing out on a lot of things here y'all again I refer you to uh, shop crawls they have videos that we've done uh, that are about this and we're, we're making more all the time. But the green that you see on the green series, this is one thing unique about green is you're, you're seeing the action of the rod come into play where the paint fades. So that's where the action uh, really takes place on the rod. So it is a little different for each one at a different uh, distance. And um, that's just one of those little detail things, you know. I like the concept that we have done on pretty much every Guggen Squad product where we make it simple, easy, literally learn through not just our, our videos, but the product itself. When I first got into bass fishing, it was just, you, you find something on the shelf, you go, you look at the, and it's just like so many things. You, you don't even know what this is for, when, what situation you would use it in. And it is so different these days. We, we want to make everything streamlined so it's so easy to just pick it up the fisherman that is literally just thinking about going to bass fishing and you go oh I can do that well it, this is how this is how it's done I mean, this is this is a video on how it's done it literally says on the package or it says on the bait I think we're bringing new anglers into fishing and I would have to say that is something really awesome that everyone at Google Swat and Ketchco should be proud of that we're doing because I see people all the time see y'all all the time at boat ramps or wherever and you tell your stories you know who you are but anyways I want to thank you guys for all the support we have the best audience in the world that is you the danglers the dangle army out there my goodness emergency dangle emergency dangle alert we don't have long and we got a lot of waters ran into a daggum fishing freak right here oh, oh god look at this why did i choose to go this way just ran into a fishing freak kind of like i was explaining to you earlier 
I said about three years ago, I started watching my videos and learned how to bass fish from those. So, pretty awesome. Is he still over here? Anyways, just listen to that real quick. I've missed that noise. I've missed that noise. Anyways, I thought that was really cool and just a testament to what I was talking about. It gives me inspiration. Keep going out here doing this, learn new things, and uh, bring all that to you guys. About to rip it. Do we have gas? We do. We can rip it. Oh, son. It's been a while since I felt that. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Got these balls of shad just hippity hopping through here. And um, there's a few fish around them and whatnot. That's a good scenario for the old chunk and wind. Crank baits, I'm gonna get that, that little lipless out there. There's a couple here that might wanna play some ball with us on the old windy point. Dang, y'all, we got some good, this is good. Shallower I get, the more I'm seeing here. Gold series, haven't even taken off my wrappers. That's kind of a signature thing of mine. I just leave my wrappers on, but when you get ready, take it off, feel the bare cork on your fingertips. Yeah. The rod that I've chosen to throw this on is the reaction. I know that because it says it right there very plainly. But honestly, I would know it just by picking it up because I've felt these things with no labels for the longest time trying to keep up with them. My favorite technique with lipless is start and stop. You can definitely catch them straight reeling, but the start and stop just seems to do some things. It's like they follow it and you stop it and they run into it and they have no choice. They have to open their grill and get in there. Okay, here we go. Found him. Wah-bam. We're just gonna drop her down. Straight drop technique. Learned this from the old Dave Mercer. Straight drop with the lipless. Just packed in. Oh, got him. Oh, gosh. Got him on the reel up. Reeling it up, he just needed that reaction. He needed that high pump. We got you, boy. We got you. Ah, uh, first catch. Welcome back to Texas. Oh, yeah, a little sundown action. Come on now, smash it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Rat it. Oh, got him. Oh. Puller? Hello. We might have a bass here. This might be the other kind. Or it's just really pulling hard. It's a magnum. It is a magnum. Oh my. Holy cow. That is a white bass, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that guy. Oh yeah. See you, big boy. Normally I'd keep you. OSG is making dinner tonight. Getting ready for the next catch and cook. I just got me a new cooking device. Really want to try some fish on it. A little fall white bass harvest catch and cook might be in order. Oh my goodness. They're getting up there in the shallow now. That one racked it. That one racked it. They're slamming this thing. Goodness. I like it when you slam that lipless, baby. Yeah. Oh man, got the double tap on the hooks. Oh, it just came off. These are great. These are great eating fish right here. Perfect size, not to mention fun. You wanna talk about fun? These fish right here, they put up a fight. And one of these days soon, because Emmy has just gotten into fishing, she'll be out here catching fish with me. Catching white bass with me. Just gotta watch those treble hooks in the back of dad's head. No, you're not. No, you're not gonna do this. You're not gonna do this. What are you doing? 
what in the hell is going on? Am I getting attacked by pirates? Just a nice little roll cast right into the front of that little Supra. That would be no problem. Watch this, we're just gonna see how close we can get. Pretty close. Pretty close, about five feet away. Appreciate that wake, that was, that was so awesome. Thank you so much, appreciate all the goodness you've done here today. Oh, oh, they're coming. Oh, the Supra done did it. The double, the double boat, <laughs> hashtag double boated, got him coming up to the surface. I hear it behind me and I just saw it in front of me. That's what we want. This little evening attack here, right here. Sometimes that does it, a little boat wake. So I was at first mad, no, I'm not mad. You can see in the graph, staying up top now. Crepuscular feeder, got him. What a, t oh, what the, what in the world, dude? Your bait, your bait, you better watch out. Yeah, give me another boat. Give me another boat, come on in here. There you go. Give me all your wake, give me everything you got. It's like I'm invisible. Oh, there we go. Begging on by the boat. Look at that. Oh yeah. Y'all check this one out. I got a good one here. There you go. You could be catching these, but you choose to get on that board thing. Don't know why. I do know why, it's pretty fun, but this is funner. Woo, man, you better watch those little triple grips on there. These triple grips on the mini clutch, they're small and dangerous. They're kind of scattered, which makes this technique really good. You know, normally if they're just wadded up, I get a spoon, I get right on top of them. But this is where, like a crankbait, just fan casting a crankbait is the deal. Oh, there's one. Little guy. I gotta tell you, these are fighting extremely hard and the water's back in the 70s now they get going everything fights harder sun going down i like a little welcome back to texas white bass session at my home lake this is fun with the new rods that me and my buddies made <laughs> man I'm gonna take it in, y'all. I'm gonna end on that happy note. First Texas fish in a while. I've been in trout land, and I'm excited for the fall. You know, the water's in the 70s when I come back. It's like, pfft, just telewarped. Telewarped to some better fishing conditions than when I left when it was 105, water was dang near 90 degrees, so. Okie dokie, Smokey. Let's get her fired on up and head on home, man. It feels good to be back, and uh, I'm excited. Fall fishing videos. White tail hunting, fall is here, man. Harvest time, y'all better get out there. Hope you're having a very blessed day wherever you are, and I wish you the best in all of your outdoor adventures. I'll see you soon on the next one, Fishing 3. <laughs>